Hey guys, Sandra here from Gitana Styling and the Fashion Entrepreneur Club. Today, I have a different kind of video for you. So I usually talk about fashion entrepreneurship, how to build your fashion business. Um, I share tips, I answer questions, and I also interview people in the industry. But today, I'm going to do a different kind of video, which is all about Poshmark. And why? <laughs> well, because um, as some of you know, I am a stylist, I dress people, and throughout the years, right, I've done a lot of fashion shows and photo shoots and work one-on-one -on -one with clients, and I always end up having these beautiful pieces hanging out in my house, in my closet, in my storage, right? And what I end up doing every so often is I gather all these pieces, and a lot of them, I donate them to either Goodwill or um, a charity, right? But there's certain pieces that are beautiful, like new, high quality, some are designer pieces. And those pieces, what I've done is I'm, I've gone ahead and sold them on Poshmark. So Poshmark has always been for me like a side thing that it's always there helping me out with these beautiful pieces that I end up uh, gathering throughout all of this stuff. And this is something that I've always recommended to my stylists in our group in the Fashion Entrepreneur Club because I know they have access to this, whether they work one-on-one -on -one with clients or they do photo shoots like me or they do fashion shows, right? Along the way or only just as a stylist going to events, dressing up, you know, buying beautiful things you end up with these pieces right that um could be an investment <laughs> okay uh, because you can go ahead and resell them online because there's always people looking for them if they're in great shape if they're popular um if they're great quality right you can go ahead and resell them and this is also something that i've always offered to my clients to my one-on-one -on -one clients because there's a lot of people who have things hanging out in their closet that they don't get rid of um, even though they don't use them, even though they don't like them anymore because they spend a lot of money or someone they love spend a lot of money and they just can't see themselves just giving it away, right? So I always offer them like, hey, why don't we resell them? If it's a good code that, you know, someone else is looking for it, that they want a great deal, like why don't we resell them, right? So it's always something that I've offered to the stylist and also to my customers and also something that I've done myself. So what I'm doing in this video, which is what I want to share with you, is I decided to be like, okay, how can I turn this into like a more um, stable thing for, for example, for my stylist, right? Something that they could be like, okay, maybe this could be a side business, or maybe I could become a reseller, or maybe this could become an important uh, income stream for my business. So I decided to put together a challenge for myself <laughs> um, to figure out, you know, what could I do, or what it takes to take it from just doing this randomly to doing it to having like a consistent source of income. So I did a 30 day Poshmark challenge. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to share with you um, four different things. First, we're going to talk about what I did for the amount of 30 days, right? Then the second thing is the 10 things I've learned, which I learned way more than 10 things, but I don't want to keep this. I mean, I could, we could talk forever, <laughs> but I want to keep it simple. If you want to learn more or any of these topics you're interested in, you want to expand, just let me know below and we'll do more videos. That's, that's just how it is. <laughs> and then the third thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the results. Okay. Um, and the fourth thing is I'm going to tell you what am I going to do with what I've learned for the next part of this process. Okay. So let's get started. Part number one is what I, what I did. Okay. So for 30 days, right. Um, I committed to three things, three things, because as you, <laughs> my life is busy and I'm running the fashion entrepreneur club and, and, you know, dealing with clients and doing all kinds of things. So I just wanted to find the the most um simple thing that I could do in a consistent basis to be able to see results and that I could commit to so I wouldn't fall off the wagon and then the challenge wouldn't do anything right for me or for the results so I committed to only three things the first thing is I decided to post to list three items a day okay so for 30 days list three items a day and one of those items, at least one, had to be a new item, okay? So that would mean that at least I had to get infuse 30 new items in my closet, okay? So at least one new item 
And then the other two could be just me updating old items in my closet. So it could be updating the description or taking new pictures or updating the title or doing different things to optimize those old listings. Okay. So that was the first thing. Commit to posting to listing three items a day. The second thing I did is I committed to learning something about Poshmark every single day because I have been on Poshmark for a while. And yes, I've learned throughout the years things because of things that have happened on the app or, you know, I bump into an article and I learn a few things or I met a stylist and I learned something, right? Or things that have happened that taught me a lesson and then I learned, right? So that has happened, but I'm like, if I want to make a change, if something, and you know, I want to figure this thing out, I'm going to commit to learning at least one new thing every single day for the 30 days. So this meant that maybe one day I listened into a short which was 30 seconds and I learned one valuable thing another day I had more time so I sat on YouTube and I watched a 20 uh, minute video another day I went on Google and I searched for articles about Poshmark and I learned something so every single day at least learning one new thing that's what I did for the 30 days and then the third thing that I did is um, accountability. I found myself an accountability partner. I have a fashion, well, not a fashion, uh, an entrepreneur friend um, that she also has a passion for selling things online. And she actually sells, she doesn't sell clothing that much, mostly decor. And she sell, sells them on different platforms. And she was kind enough to join me and, and be an accountability partner in this uh, challenge with me and keep me accountable for the 30 days. And so what we did is we met um, before starting the challenge and she helped me put together the challenge. Then we met in the middle of the challenge to see how it was going and, every, and what I've learned and everything. And then we met at the end of the challenge as well to see what happened and analyze the results. So um, we did this for 30 days and then I kept uh, data or information. I recorded everything that happened within those um, 30 days. So all the listings that I put together, I kept them on a document. Uh, everything that I've learned, I put it together in a document. Um, the meetings that we had and notes about it in a document. So I opened a Google Drive document and put all that information there. And she was actually kind enough to create a table with formulas and everything to um, you measure, you know, uh, how much I sold and how much I made and all of that good stuff. So she was key in this whole thing. OK, so that's what I did. Listing three items a day, learning one thing a day, having an accountability partner, and I kept track of everything. OK, so yes. So now let's dive into the 10 things that I've learned throughout these 30 days. Now, like I said, I learned way more than that, but we're gonna keep it simple here. So in case you're interested in diving into this reselling business or you're a stylist and you wanna you know, try this out or you just have beautiful things in your closet and you wanna make money out of them, you know, you can try this out. You can get, you, this is a good starting point, okay? Okay, so the first thing that I've learned is, um, I have my list here because there's too many things to talk about in this video. The first thing was sharing. You have to share every single day, okay? So before I would just post something, right? And randomly get a like or get an offer or whatever. And the thing would sell after a month or two months or maybe right away, right? But I realized, right, that I had to share every single day. And by doing so, I got more likes and I, I and I got offers and I got to send offers too. And that created a momentum and, you know, uh, a consistency, right? So number one thing, you have to reshare uh, share your closet every single day, okay? The second thing is um, listing. So you do have to list things. Like my experience has been that I have to list something, at least one thing every single day, okay? Because that's just how the platform is made, okay? And I have learned how many things to share and all of that, which I'm gonna talk more into it uh, as we keep on going in the video, but you have to already like switch your mindset, uh, mindset and be like, okay, I have to list every single day. That's that's a switch that you have to, that you have to make, okay? 
the third thing is offers. So um, in the beginning, I didn't use to send offers. A lot of people would send me offers and I would accept them or decline them or counter offer, right? And if this has never happened to you, um, this is someone likes your item, right? And you have to list it at a certain price and they send you an offer and they tell you, you know, can I buy it at this price? And then you have the option to say, you know, yes, or you can counter it right? And tell them, no, but I can offer you this. And then you can offer them a discount and shipping and things like that. So I had experienced that part of the thing. And as time went by, I learned that I could send my own offers to the people who like the items. So I started doing that. But during this challenge, I committed to it and I started doing it consistently. Every time someone liked something, every time um, someone sent me an offer, I responded, like following the, again, the flow to be consistent. And you have to do that. That's a key element. I learned these three things are like the three things that you have to do all the time. You have to list, you have to share, and you have to send the offers. That, like, if you don't know, learn anything else about this uh, challenge, is that those three things you have to do them if you want to do something in part, <laughs> something significant, right? Okay. The fourth thing I've learned is that as I'm telling you these, you be you you might be thinking like. I have to send offers and I have to be sharing. How many times do I have to share? I have to be listing. How many listings do I have to uh, put together every day? Like there's a lot of work. And I have to tell you, three listings might not sound like so much work, um, but it was a lot of work, okay? Which I enjoy part of it, of course, um, because I love Poshmark and I love doing the, I love the, the, the reselling thing, but um, it is a lot of work, especially when you have a life and you have a business to run and you have all these things going on. It takes time. It, take, it took a commitment for me to be like, every day I'm going to list three things. Every day I'm going to learn. Every day I'm going to record my information on this document. Doing that took a lot of work. And I've learned through this process that a lot of people out there are doing a lot of work to be able to get very good results. But a lot of people are using a lot of tools to help them with this process, with the listing, with the sharing, with the sending offers, and all kinds of things that you can do inside Poshmark. So I learned that there's a lot of tools. Some of those tools could be Poshmark VA. There's all, another one called Vendu. There's relisting, cross-listing. There's all these apps um, and tools that help you list, reshare, um, send offers, all kinds of things. So, um, so, you know, just have a mindset shift again that there's tools out there to help you with this. So if you don't want to do this manually, which I don't recommend after doing it for a month um, that it could change the game for you, that there's tools out there to help you and they can change the game. So I'm just throwing that out there, which I I wish someone would have told me since before, <laughs> way before, okay? The fifth thing is titles. So um, I learned that for a title, to, for an item to be found, right? You have to have at least 26 characters in your title. So yes, I used to put like the brand, the type of clothing, and I've learned that there's so many things you can include in there because obviously that works as a search engine. So when people write stuff, if you have most of the things that they're looking for and you have a good title, it will pick it up and your, your item will show. So what kinds of things? Well, you can include the brand, you can include if it's new or not new, or if it has tags, um, the style could be important, the sizing, the colors, like there's so many things. Um, and I know there's a limit. I don't remember the amount, so you cannot write a paragraph but at least 26 characters for the description to be to get discovered within the app okay the other thing is okay um there's a lot of things happening inside Poshmark that help you push these items promote them and make more sales so there's something called promoted closet which I actually tried it's a paid um, service inside um, Poshmark, but they offered me a free trial and I did it, I think for a week, um, where they promote your listings. And then if you make a sale out of that listing, then, you know, they have their commission that they already take because of you having the item on Poshmark, but they also, um, you pay for this service and they have a fee. So I try it for free for a week 
and I got one sale out of it. Um, I didn't find, I mean, maybe I have to experiment more, went more with it, but I found other information that was more helpful for me to predict what could happen uh, if I do these things consistently. So for me, it wasn't, um, you know, I'm not discarding it completely. There's people who have a lot of success with promoted closet, but for me, it just didn't do um, what it, I was expecting it to do. Again, I'm a newbie here. So, <laughs> but just based on my experience and what I did, um, it wasn't what I was expecting. But um, I think there's value in it. And there's other things that you can do. They have their closet clear out, which is those days where they offer the customer a shipping discounts. So then you don't have to offer that. So then you can make more money and then they can get a better deal because they get that discount, right? There's the parties happening inside of Poshmark where you, if your item fits the ideology of the party, you can include it so then you can get more views and get more likes. So there's a lot of things happening happening in the app and um, they're all valuable. So you just have to decide, you know, which ones you want to participate in. And again, these are so many things and we can do videos about all of this stuff if you're interested, but I'm just trying to give you like an overview so you know where to start. Okay. Then the next thing is um, how to make more money. So I've learned that obviously if you have better pieces, right? And better pieces not necessarily is an expensive piece. It's a piece that, yes, it has a good, uh, uh, it could give you a good profit, but it's a piece also that people are looking for, that people want to buy. Like there's a lot of elements. Maybe it's in style. Like there's different elements that count as a good piece. And if you have a good piece, right, that people are looking for, that has a good price where you can make a good profit, where they can get a good deal, where um, they're going to, it's going to fly away from your closet very quickly, like all of these elements, right? That's what you can, that's what you should look for to make consistent income in Poshmark. So a lot of people, what they do is just they list and list and list, and they have a lot of items in their closets. I, I found people who have more than 10,000 items in their closet. I don't even know how they do this kind of thing. Of course, they have help and 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 they're, they're, I'm assuming they're making good money to have a team and all of this, but it's a lot of work involved. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be that kind of uh, seller. Maybe maybe I, I, I find more passion for it and, and I will. So I won't say no, but I don't see myself there in my case is something that like I said me as a stylist I just have these beautiful pieces that I know people are looking for them and that could be a side income stream and also because it's fun for me like I love like I'm a, a TJ Max Maximista fashionista <laughs> like I love finding a great deal and I love I know that there are people out there doing the same thing. Like I love going to a designer store and buying something of high quality for myself, but I love finding a great piece at TJ Maxx for a steal of a price that is new and is perfect and I can get it right away, right? So I love that. And which is something, an element that I find in Poshmark and that I also that I can share with the things that I've used. For example, I have used these beautiful shoes for a photo shoot once and they're new and they're perfect, right? And and they're just hanging out there in my closet because they're not my size and not my style. And I know there's a person out there who would love to have those shoes. So those are the kind of things that I like listening in my store. But again, if you have consistent flow of this because you work in the fashion industry or because you have a good eye for fashion or whatever, this could be an income stream, right? So for me, you know, thinking about having good pieces is an important part of having a successful uh, Poshmark uh, closet, okay? Or the other option is just listing a lot of stuff, okay? Which those are the two things that I have learned, okay? Because if you if you list a lot of stuff, then there's all these other things play in the in the you know the sharing, the relisting, the listing, the things that I've talked up to now. All those things count. The sharing on the parties, like all of that stuff. The the platform is built for those things. There's like the algorithm. Everything is happening behind the scenes, so you can do it that way too. It's just I don't want to do it that way. 
I'm trying to figure out what is a formula, a minimal viable formula that I could be happy with and that it could be a, a good source of income that is more consistent and more predictable, okay? So do what you want with that, <laughs> okay? Then the next one is keywords. So I've learned a lot about keywords throughout this process, right? And keywords are important. I've learned a lot about what people are looking out, uh, out for, what things are selling, not selling, and how to include that in the in the description. So I feel like education in keywords, in, in, in the pieces and what you're selling, it's really key also. I see a lot of people just, they just put a picture or two pictures max, and then they just write three words. And of course, they're not going to be found. If they're competing with someone who's telling you, everything about that item how it fits how it measures like um i'm saying measurements like the colors like all this information that is valuable and important and then you you show me enough pictures which is another tip right to have enough pictures for people to see the merchandise which i didn't include here but like i said there's so many things <laughs> right um so there's all those things so i think the keywords that you're using for your title for your description are super super important in getting found in the world and sea world of um Poshmark, okay and also you know another info within this one is at least 25 plus items um they call it characters i guess no 25 plus words in the description so again some people i see they just have like one sentence have at least 25 words to be found to be discovered within the platform okay in the description okay number nine we're in number nine now so what if, because I said I did three items a day and um, my last, my last, <clears throat> sorry, my last tip would, would give you a lot of information and it's all about the research that I did with the one tip a day, um, one thing, learning one thing a day. But what I've learned through people, right, and me doing this thing 30 days is it has to be more than three, right? But three is a good place. Even if you start with one, because that's what you can do right now, it's a good place to start with one, okay? But if you want a certain amount of income and all of that, um, I what I found is that between five and 10, five and 10 seems to be like the magic number for the people who are having success with this, okay? So, um what if you don't have those five to ten items so what i did i did the three items a day and i combine it with things that i already have and that's when the relisting comes in a lot of people you know they list something new but they also relist something old and every time they relist it counts as something new okay so you kind of recycle items that you have in your closet and you also infuse the new items so let's say ideally it's going to be five to 10, but you can start with less. Okay. So um, the next thing and the final thing is really, really the learning from other people has really been key in this. Okay. And I want to give a shout out to three people that I really learned a lot from <laughs> because they're creating amazing content here on YouTube and it's worth giving them a shout out. I've learned from a lot of them and I'm going to continue doing this. Um, but I really, you know, if you want to learn more and you want to go more in depth into what I've been telling you here, yes, I can do more videos and I am going to do at least another video, uh, which I'm going to talk about uh, right now, but you can learn from these ladies. So I've learned a lot from Shop 801 Lane. So I'll make sure to include her channel below. She does a lot of shorts too, quick tips that you can learn right away. And she does video too. I love her personality and her energy. So she's really fun to watch. Um, she does a great job. Then Rebecca, the reseller, amazing. She has such good information such good information i learned a lot from her i already purchased stuff from her like i'm all over the place she is doing amazing work and then um kaylee elaine um she also you can learn a lot from her about brands and things that are selling and not selling and things like that so i'll make sure to include uh their links below and i give you guys a shout out you're doing amazing and you're helping people 
like you have no idea. <laughs> so um, I want to thank you guys for for sharing um, what you learn along the way because it really makes a difference. Okay, so okay, so these are my ten uh, tips, my ten things that I've learned. And again, I can do more. I have way more, um, and I can get more in depth. I I was thinking of doing a nitty gritty, like a video with a nitty gritty, like how much you should post, how much you should share, how much you should like get into the details. But again, I don't want this. I didn't want this video to be like super long, which I think already it's gonna be very long. So. Um, that's for another video. If you want to that video, let me know below and I'll make sure to put it together. But then the last thing is, well, we have two last things. The two last things are the results, which they're not very good. Okay. And then what I'm going to do with it. So the results were, as I was putting these um, together with my amazing friend. Okay. We had two cells. I was, I was getting the the closet ready then and then we had three sales as um the every week like I had basically I had basically one sale a week okay so from doing this every so often to doing this consistently I just started having basically a sale a week okay one week I had two sales Woo <laughs> So, um, so this tells me that doing things consistently do change the trajectory of the, of the closet, the algorithm, the results, everything. And now that I've learned all the things, because I tried so many things throughout this month, and I know that I have to share so many times and I have to share more new listings and I have to do real listings and I have to do all these things that I've talked about here in this video. I'm going to infuse that into the next 30 days. And the number one thing that I'm going to do to make sure that I don't go crazy because I was already, it was a lot of work to do it with the three listings. And I ideally want to bump it up into the five listings to start into that five to 10 listing. I'm going to try the Posture VA. Okay, so I'm going to try the Posture VA. So I automate all of this okay and and yeah that's what I'm going to do I'm going to do all of the stuff that I've done here upgraded to the numbers that uh, that I've learned that that people who are having success with this have been doing and be based on the results that I've had and I'm going to supercharge what happened this month okay and that's going to be the next video that's going to be the follow-up video of, of this video. <laughs> so if you're interested in that, you know, um, follow, <laughs> like, subscribe, so you know. Um, really, again, the point of this is, you know, initially we were, me and my friend were like, okay, let's make an extra $1,000 a month, right? But more than that is, you know, what is the breaking point? When does it start being something that could be consistent, that could be predictable, and that could be a, a side um, source of income or an actual business for people, right? So when I share this experience with you who you are watching me on YouTube or my clients or you know, uh, my stylists who want to grow their businesses because this can become a reliable source of income. Okay. So that's what I have for you today. I hope that this was helpful. I love, I hope that you learned something again. I'm trying to, I think I'm going to do the follow up video, right? With the results of this month of what happens this month with all the updates of all this information, plus the posture VA. And then I would like to do a nitty gritty video um, of just like, how much to share, how much to post, how much to blah, 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 like numbers, right? And see how that works. So let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you like this video. Let me know if you want to learn about something in particular, if you want me to extend on any of the points that we talk about here today. And yeah, if you are interested in building a successful fashion business, I always have available for you these free guides where you can get your ideas organized and, you know, um, start putting together that fashion business. I will leave the link below also so you can get organized and, and join our world and, and start doing this with us. Um, but yeah, I just want to thank you so much for watching this video and I cannot wait um, to share the next information with you. Bye guys.